This is six double ring generators linked up to a magnetic wheel at a two to one ratio to show that you can pedal the energy to start a vehicle. And remember that they uh, can be, this is a magnetic drive with a wheel in it. On the basis, you can see that they're wired uh, to a lot of capacitors. That's why it's taking a bit, but we're going to try to do continuous now. Now we're going to try and do continuous. Right now, pan around. I'm turning the switch. So, the pedaling to generate your energy until the air turbines in front can kick in uh, at 20 or 30 miles per hour, it works. And it can be increased by better magnets, uh, lower tolerance uh, between the uh, magnets and coils, and adding more coils. Each one of these is double uh, three phase, and for the first time I wired them, uh, six on one side, uh, nine on one side, and nine on the other side uh, uh, together, so I saved wire, and it's like two circles becoming one circle. And because the magnets hit north-south in the same ratio across from each other. So, you know, it works, right? I didn't know that wiring you will not find on Wikipedia. But while I was building this, I got a better idea. What, since you're not using any torque here, it's too easy for your feet to go. It's like a high gear mechanically. Mechanical's gone, of course, right? It's now a magnetic wheel. And you can tell it's the more silent, it has more trouble of feet. The thing is, I said, hey, what if you're like doing a rotary pump, air pump, a rotary air pump? And that way, you pipe out the compressed air, and uh, it can come in from the back of the air turbine, right? Well, the, when you speed up, it's coming in the front of the air turbine. So you can cut all these out, and you're running the main set of generators, so you're saving a lot of money and a lot of weight and expense, right? Since I thought of the pump, I suddenly, looking and doing research, realized that the reason I didn't do horizontal ones instead of the uh, flat uh, grill-like ones was because of the resistance is so great, especially when you stack them up and so on. So I realized that the magnets that they show as flying saucers floating off with super uh, nitrogen, super magnets and so on, can be, you can see here, this is just floating. And it's not attached to the middle at all. So it can revolve without resistance. You see? And by revolving or without resistance, you now make this practical. And so this can be made more or less like the uh, pedal system and the magnetic wheels there. Now when I take this off, you'll see what's been holding this up. It's just three small magnets set at a diangle. When I set them at regular with the screw-ins, it didn't uh, lie flat. My idea was that to make it revolve, but I failed to make it revolve. So I resorted to the next experiment. I decided to make it revolve with air. If you're making an air pump and it's being uh, channeled through a hose here and you have the magnetic uh, floats, uh, friction-free uh, magnetic bearings, this turns more or less like an old 70, uh, 33 record and yet it weighs uh, several pounds. So that's the difference. Cutting the resistance makes the horizontal apparatus practical. And you can see this has got 12 fins, and this is uh, actually part. I'm going to dismantle it for you because you've seen videos, you YouTubers in science and tech, and you never see the inside of them. So I'm going to show you the inside of this, how it works. This are the magnets of two 
three phase star formations, like over at the pedal thing. In the center is a single one with all the same poles, it's monopole. These are dipole, so this will make AC current, but the center ones will make DC current directly without a rectifier. Now, try and notice where the screw goes down and where it doesn't go down. You see that the screw goes down here, so this is the same pole, but this is the opposite pole. Don't try and line it up on the same pole on the outside. It doesn't work. It's got to be the opposite pole on the, on the outside. So you see that it's lined up so it's balanced. Okay, now I'm going to take it up to show you the wiring. Here's the wiring diagram. Here's your uh, nine of your A1, A2, A3, B, C. And here's your A prime, B prime, E prime. This shows you how the uh, pedal one was wired. Now I'm going to show you what was holding up. You've noticed that there's two magnets in the middle and, and one magnet on the outside. That was because I, it wasn't strong enough to float with, uh, with one magnet. And I have magnets below of the same pole as the magnets above. So I want to show you this because this principle, as far as I know, is unknown. You saw me with a big ring over there, a very expensive, heavy magnet, right? But I did a series of experiments with smaller magnets, many of which failed. You can look at this Parcheesi board of a whole mat, which I hoped would float over the center and it didn't work, right? Which I found frustrating because you can see videos where they've got some sort of a field like that and it does sort of work. <laughs> some secrets that other people have. Okay, I'm going to lift this off, and you see underneath, is a box, and look, it isn't even, the, the pillar is completely free, right? And underneath is a magnet, and inside are other magnets. So it's double above and double below. But the whole key here is that when the top one moves, when the wind is moving in circles faster and faster, the bottom one moves too. So the same pole magnets stay over each other no matter how much speed. If this didn't rotate, then it would like hesitate, it would have resistance, it would have the trough, right? But there's no trough because they stay locked in place. And that was a surprise to me and a good surprise, right? So what we see here is actually the, the poor man's flying saucer, the common man's flying saucer. For earth travel, it's much cheaper than having a multi-billion dollar, whatever you call it, NASA thing. You see it float? As I put weight on it, it floats lower and lower, but still keeps a gap. That's where the, the wiring is going to be, and it's going to pass right over it. The magnets are a special steel, neobium, lanthanum, contracture, rare earth, and so on. And it's a crystallized state, uh, solid state physics, right? But the point of all of this, and why it's a flying saucer, is that the realization has hit the scientific community that each magnet is actually a gravitational system in itself, just like the planet Earth is, or the sun, you know, or the galaxy, right? It, it has its own sphere, just like the atoms in your cell, you know, and in the periodic scale have their own scale, right? Much bigger than these. This solid state alignment of the ferrous imbalance thing uh, uh, it, it, that aligns them and crystallizes them at the Curry temperature under intense electromagnetic force means that when you take two magnets and place them together, it's like two planets. If Uranus is on its side in this magnetic field and it comes close to the Earth, there's going to be a tremendous amount of energy and heat created, right? 